gentlemen, and welcome to the Activity Call Live. Now, let's hear it for our special guest host, Marcus Richardson. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Thank you for the amazing intro. Um, welcome. Welcome, Alliance family. I am so honored and blessed to be here. Um, Andy is traveling out, taking care of some business, so they have asked us to fill in, and we will do our best. I'm excited about today's topic and today's call. As you know, we have a big event coming up next week. Literally in seven days, we will be in Raleigh, North Carolina, and here's what I got. It's not too late if you don't have a ticket. If you want to come hang out with us, if you want to grow and you want to experience the Alliance effect is what I call it. It's not too late to get your tickets. You can go to thealliancevents.com and you can still purchase a ticket. Now, some managers also have tickets at a discount. You have to reach out to them directly. Your manager may have one at a discount, but we want to encourage you if you are not coming to come. But that's not what this call is for, okay? This call today is to really, all right, Marcus, you've been here 12 years. You've been to a bunch of these meetings. And Jack had asked me when we were getting the call set up, he's meant, how many meetings have you been to? And I started doing the math and I said, well, I've been here 12 years and we have one every quarter. We used to call them spring forwards and we used to call them fall forwards back in the day. Um, I've been to everyone except for one uh, since I've been here. And so I did the math and I said, it's probably about 48 or 47, man, that I've been to. So my goal today is to tell you how to best prepare for those and how to maximize it. Now, if you're watching this call and you're like, well, I'm not going to make it next week or you haven't been to one of our events, don't turn me off because there's also going to be information and nuggets that I'm going to share with you that you can use in every area of your life, not just when you come to big events. The first nugget I'm going to share with you that you can use in every area of your life is this one right here. If you don't plan you can plan on failing. Okay. I'm going to say that one more time. If you don't plan, you can plan on failing. So what that means is if you don't clearly lay out what your plan of attack is and what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish, then you will fail. Another nugget you can write down is success is predictable. I'm going to say that one more time. Success is predictable. And so is failure. What does that mean? That means if you see other people having success, then there's something that they did to have that success. If you see someone failing, there's something that they did to create that failure in their life. And so you can look at those who are successful and follow the breadcrumbs, right? Like Hansel and Gretel. Okay. You, you can see what was laid out before you got there, the track record and things they have done. And that's what I'm going to try to share with you today. It's um, on the sales side, the business building side, coming to events, all of it is predictable. And here's one thing I know when Andy wrote the eight steps book, step number five is attend all meetings. So what that tells me is if a person is not coming to all the meetings, success and failure is predictable. Typically, typically, this is what I've seen. If a person doesn't attend a big event within 90 days to six months, they're not with us. And when I say big event, I'm talking about our national events, but also our hotspots because they haven't caught the culture and the spirit. And then you feel like a lone ranger. You feel like a isolated coal, like if you're grilling, right? And you know, most people have propane tanks nowadays, but back Back in the day, we had the charcoals. They still have them too. And you would put all the charcoals together and you would have the grill and they would burn. And, and as they're together, they're burning hotter and brighter. But if you take one coal and you just set it off to the side, it fizzles out a lot quicker. And that's what happens a lot of times when you don't get around the team and you don't come to the meetings or you don't jump on a Friday call or you don't jump on a Wednesday call or you don't jump on your team call, the Thursday product call. You are like a um, piece of charcoal that is isolated by itself. And eventually the coal is going to burn out. So this is why you want to come to the meeting so you can stay around the fire and you can keep the heat going and fan the flame. And just for me in my time of doing this, I have no, noticed that usually about the 90 day mark, um, I guess I'd hate, I hate to say it like this, but the, the magic wears off, right? And so you need to go and get the magic and get re-inspired and reinvigorated to be able to perform at a high level. And so that's what another reason why I think the meetings are so important. And it said like this, either you need the meeting or the meeting needs you. At one point, I wasn't talking at meetings when I was going, I was just listening. And so now I'm doing a little more speaking and helping and serving the team. But I always need to go because there's people that I want to minister to and help or that 
I need to hear from to help me grow in certain areas and to think different. So again, if you're tuned to this and you say, I don't even have a ticket, I'm not going, uh, it's too late. We still got another one coming up in August, right? Um, I want you to get your ticket for this one if you're not coming, but don't turn me off because there's some stuff that I'm going to give you that you can use in every area of your life um, on this call today. So the first thing I want to talk to you about when it comes to the events, okay? And we talked about planning, but the first thing is get a ticket to the event. Now, some people, I've seen this over 12 years of doing it, they'll get a ticket and pay the money and still not come to the event. So listen to me very carefully. Leadership is visual. The first person that you have to lead is yourself. So get your ticket. That's number one. Number two is get the plane ticket. A lot of times people will get their conference ticket, but they don't get their plane ticket. Your plane ticket is going to go up, right? So you want to make sure you have your plane ticket and have it scheduled and you want to have your hotel booked. You start with yourself first, okay? So get your plane ticket, get your hotel, get your um, conference ticket. Next, the other thing I tell people too, and this is how we continue to grow from meeting to meeting. Don't leave this meeting when they give you a chance to buy your ticket to the next meeting without having your ticket. So get your ticket to the next big event that is going to be in August for our family reunion. Okay. So that's important. That is critical because that's how you continue to compound. Now leaders do this. So this is what I did yesterday. Um, and been kind of going through it the last couple of weeks is I'll go through the team tickets and see who has their tickets. If it's bought on a payment plan, we're having those conversations about, Hey, is this getting paid off? Where are you at with making sure that gets paid? But not only that conversation, because I'm leading people. So in order to do that, just like I had to get my plane ticket and I had to get the hotel, I'm having those conversations. So you'll pull up your group. If you're a leader, you'll look at your group. You'll see if the ticket's paid off or if it's on the payment plan. Let's get that ticket paid off. We got a week to get that done. Okay. And then the second thing we have to do is we have to make sure they have their plane ticket and they have their hotel because I would hate for them to be some of the people I've seen in the past who get the conference ticket. Everybody's fired up. I got my ticket. I got it at the discount price. Everything's good, but you don't have a plane ticket. You don't have a hotel. And so really until you get those two paid for in addition to your conference ticket, in my mind, you're not coming. Yep. That's right. So in my mind, I don't think you're coming unless you get those tickets paid for. So make sure you stay consistent with getting those tickets and getting that paid for, because that's going to lock you in. All right. So now you got locked in, you're coming to the big event. So when you come to the big event, you need to be intentional. You're investing money. You're investing time away from your family. You're investing in your business. And so when you come to the event, you need to be intentional. So one of the things I wrote down, whenever I come to an event, here's a question I ask myself or a question I want you to start asking yourself, okay, is what are you trying to become better at? Let's in this example, right? We have three things that we do really here at the Alliance. We sell insurance. We recruit other people. And we teach them how to do the same thing, which is what we call building. Okay. So those are the three things that we do. There's an art to how we do it, but those are the three things that we do. So when you're looking at your situation, you're looking at your business, you're spending time away, you're, com you're coming and you're working with the team. Those are the questions you should be asking yourself is what am I trying to become better at? If it's sales, if it's building, if it's in recruiting, right? And then here's the next thing you need to do. So who's great at those things already? So whenever I am in a situation where I'm looking to get better at these specific things, I am making sure that I avail myself to that information to people who are having success. The first place you can avail yourself is when the meeting is actually going on, being in the meeting, being present in the meeting, because all the speakers we have next weekend coming up are phenomenal. Um, Mark and Andy have put the speakers together, so they're endorsed by the leadership of the Alliance, but they know what they're doing. They're not going to have anybody get up and speak to you who's not selling a lot of life insurance. We just won't. We won't do that because it's not. It doesn't give us credibility. We're not going to have someone get up and talk to you about recruiting and, and bringing on a team and building a team, and they're not recruiting. 
or they don't have people selling like that's just doesn't make sense. That's going out the world backwards. As my grandpa says, we're not going to send you out the world backwards. So everybody that's on stage communicating, opening up their heart, they're spending time putting it together. They're spending time giving their heart to you and opening up to you and showing you exactly how to do it. So the best thing you can do when you get there is if we have a session and the session is in progress, stay in the session, stay present, phones off, right? Bring a pen, bring a paper, make sure you are seated in the front. And some people say, well, why the front Marcus? Here's why. Because when you're in the front, now, if you, if you get there late, you're not going to be in the front. I'm just going to tell you. Okay. Um, and there's some VIP seats and stuff like that. You can't take the VIP seats, but apart from that, you want to get as close to the front as possible. Because if you've ever read Andy's eight steps book, when he talks about listening in there, he says, there's a way to listen when you're listening to a person's body language. So if you're in a room and you're at a big event, you want to come and you want to sit as close as possible because you're going to get to see their facial expressions. You're going to get to see their body language and how they're communicating because a lot of, and I said this before, but a lot of what we do here at the Alliance is caught, not taught. So even though we're going to be teaching and we're going to be communicating what's on our heart and the things that we are good at, there's things that come from the stage that you can't catch if you're way in the back. So try your best to get there early and stay late. Okay. Because when you get there early, you're going to be able to get a good seat. So you're there early, you're present phones off being engaged, locked in pen and paper, taking notes. And then the other thing I would say too, is a lot of times I have done, I've been guilty of this is that I take notes, but I don't review them until the next time I'm going to an event. When you take notes, circle things that you say, all right, you know what? They said this, and I'm going to go ahead and apply this this next 30 days in my business. I'm going to go ahead and apply this this next week in my business. So you have practical application of things you can take from the speakers, and you can actually use that the moment you hit the hit home, and then you can hit the ground running. So those are just some nuggets I want to give you when it comes to you're at the event, but be at the event because a lot of times you know you can be at some place but not there. Y'all know what I mean? Where you're mentally checked out because you got life happening. There's stuff going on. You left the kids, you left the spouse or their spouse is with you, but the kids are, or, you know, just life is happening. Or you're like, man, I should be out writing premium. I got bills to pay and I'm spending a bunch of money. Don't think of it like that. You are making an investment in yourself. And I love what Brian Tracy says. And this is one of the things that I've committed and we've seen our income go up. In one of Brian Tracy's books, he talked about investing in personal development. And uh, one of the guys he was talking to, he challenged and he said, hey, if you can take 10% of your gross income and invest it in personal development, you'll be able to exponentially grow your income. So the guy said, you know what? I'm going to do this. So he took 10% of his income and he started doing that in his business. He was an entrepreneur. And the very next year, that 10% of his income almost tripled. And then the second year, it went 10% of his income and he went to a million dollars in income that year. And so when I heard this, honestly, it was probably like seven years ago when I read it in the book. And I said, well, if this guy can take 10% of his income for personal development, I can at least do 1%, right? That's what, that's what my mind was. Coming to the events and investing in, let's just say the event's going to run you $3,000 total, right? Because you got your plane ticket, conference ticket, hotel. This is $3,000, okay? That $3,000 is part of my, I've increased it since then, but it's part of my 1% of personal development. So what am I sharing with you? Can you take 1% of your gross income? So I'm going to keep it really, really simple. But if your income is, let's say 50,000, right? 1% of that, can you take 1% of $50,000 and use it to come to the next three events through the rest of the year? If you do that, you will see your income double and triple if you make sure you're in attendance and then you make sure you're applying the information because it doesn't do you good just to get information and not apply it, right? Wisdom is the principal thing, so therefore get wisdom. But with all you're getting, you want to get an understanding. So make sure you're getting the information and then you're taking the information and you're applying it to your business. Can you commit to taking 1% of your gross income? So in this example, if you made $100,000 last year, right? 1%, can, can you, so 10% is 10,000. So 1% would be $1,000, right? You might even have to bump it up to 5%. 
because some of the conferences are going to cost a little bit more. But can you take a percentage of your income and can you allocate it to your personal growth? Coming to the events, buying the books, going to the seminars, all those things are going to help you grow as a person. Okay. So that wasn't in my notes, but that was just an extra little side note sidebar. Now, remember, you're at the event. You want to make sure you're present. And then let me just do, so I got some things that I want to just kind of coach you on. So remember we talked about, you want to get around the people who are having the best results. So let's say you're looking at the sales and you say, well, I don't really know who's selling a lot. So how can I get better at selling one? We're going to teach it to you from stage. So again, make sure you're present in the meeting because you're going to get all that from stage. But two, what I recommend and what what we tell our team is that look at the leaderboards because the leaderboards are the ones who are actually doing it. And for me, when I look at the leaderboards, boards. I'm looking for, is there a name that's consistent, consistent, sustained success? Because I have seen, and I just, I don't want to put off on nobody, but I've seen someone who can do it for like uh, the leaderboard because it's early in the year, right? So we're in April and you can see some people at the top 10 of the leaderboard. But my question is, can they sustain that success throughout the year? And so for me, I'm looking at the leaderboard and, you know, asking questions to my manager. Cause some of you look at the leaderboard and you'll see some people in the top 10, but not all those people in the top 10, I would ask those questions to, because I don't know if it's going to be sustainable throughout the whole year. And so this is when you want to get with your growing up line and say, Hey, I see this name in the top 10. How can I get with this person or, or what are some things I can do to ask them some questions? Okay. So look for people who have sustained, sustained success, right? When you want to ask them some questions offline. So when you get lunches, breakfasts, dinners, right? Those are people you want to be looking for at the events. Or if you catch them in between bathroom breaks, right? Those are people that you want to ask things to, because a lot of the nuggets that I have gotten when I come to the events are not necessarily always in the event. It's some of my stuff offline and some of my early breakfasts, right? It's some of the um, lunches that I have with some of the top producers. That's like, Oh, got it. Okay. So, so that's the first, Get the leaderboards and look at the ones who are top in sales and then look at the ones who are also top in recruiting and building and see if you can get some time with them. Now, remember, we're going to have 1,500, maybe 2,000 people at this event and everybody's going to be trying to do if they watch this call, they're going to be trying to do what you're doing. Right. So you, you may not have a lot of time with the person and be mindful of that too, because they have teams and things that they have going on. So you want to make sure you're being mindful of their time. But if you do get time with them, here's how I would encourage you approach a person. So if we were sitting down having a conversation and we were talking and you, you had come to me and you had questions about sales, right? I'm, I'm good at sales. And you wanted to talk to me. First off, let's do this. Don't do the guess who I am game. But I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. Sometimes people are like, well, you know, if they put their hand over their name tag and they're like, guess who I am? Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that to any of the top leaders. Here's what I want you to do. My name is Marcus. I am out of Aurora, Colorado. So you tell them who you are. You're out of Aurora, Colorado and who your direct upline is. I'm hired and direct by to Andy Albright. Okay. So introduce yourself, tell them where you're out of, shake their hand, smile, and then tell them who you're direct to. Okay. And then what you want to do now, some people just start asking questions and firing away. I have found that people are more prone to ask you questions when you ask questions about themselves. So instead of just, Hey, can I ask you how much you invest in leads and stuff like that? Right. Here's what I recommend. Talk to them a little bit, get to know them and ask questions. How's the family doing? Did you bring your family with you? How are the kids? How's your wife? How's your significant other? Right. And then they'll let their guard down, right? And they're like, oh, okay, he's cool people. He's, he's a real guy, you know? He's just asking questions about me. And then when you do that, say, hey, man, I had a couple business questions. Can I just run this by you real quick? And honestly, if you do it the right way, it can be a five-minute conversation, but you can get so much out of that five-minute conversation because you're coming and you're coming to get it and you're being very intentional. So you got to make sure you're being very intentional when you have a person who is on the leaderboard that you want to ask questions to. So again, to recap, Start with a little bit about them. Ask some questions about themselves and then ask your business question. Now, let me say this. When you ask your business question, there's a couple things that you want to listen for. Okay. You need to get, when you ask the question, the first thing is you need to find out what they're doing. Okay. So when you're asking a big recruiter, ask them what they're doing, what their investment is, their lead investment. Now, here's the other thing I would tell you is a lot of times people that have the big agencies, 
you're asking them their lead, their investment at their current level. So let me give you an example. Right now, ABN invests a bunch of money in recruiting. Okay. And so if you're just getting started, it's not a really good question to ask him how much he's investing in recruiting now. It might not hurt to know that when you get to that level, but you want to ask more questions based on where you are. So, hey, A.B., when you were starting out and you had a group of like five people, right? Or, hey, A.B., when you were starting out and you had a group of like 20 people, how much were you investing in ads and, and, and where were you investing that money, okay? So ask it based on where you currently are, not where A.B. is currently at. Or um, if you're doing personal production, for example, everybody sees Megan and sees what she's doing, right? She's a top producer every single year, very consistent. But you don't want to ask Megan what she's doing now. Right. Because, you know, she's investing like crazy. And so some of that stuff might scare you. Eventually, you'll get to that point. But a better question, if you're brand new, right, I'm I'm directing this to my brand new people. And even if you've been here for a while, but you're not getting the results you want. The question you want to ask Megan, the question you want to ask Abian, the question you want to ask Mike and Noel, you know, the question you want to ask Riddle, the question you want to ask myself, like some of the people who are actually doing it and putting up consistent numbers is based on where you currently are. Does that make sense? So if you're writing 10,000 a month and you want to take that to 25,000 a month, ask questions based on where you are at 10,000 a month. And most of the leaders, I promise you this, if they're good at doing what they do, they're going to stop and ask you questions anyway, and they're going to be able to do it based on where you are, but you'll be able to shorten your learning curve, the gap, if you tell them where you already are. So, hey, um, Abian, I got five people in my agency and um, I really want to double by the next time, the next event that we have up at Family Reunion. So if I'm looking at doubling my five, what are some things specifically, or hey, Riddle, you know, what are some things that you did when you were starting out in order to really grow your agency or Fitz? You know, hey, Fitz, what are some things that you did, man, to, to really grow this thing or Davies? I'm, and I I'm, hate to start name dropping, but those are some of our big leaders and most people know them and recognize them. But if you're going to have those conversations with them, don't have conversations with Fitz, who's been with Andy for 20 plus years or Abian, right, based on where they currently are. You want to ask questions based on where you are and what they did when they were your size in the business, because everybody started out as a seed. They didn't just become the number one agency overnight. They all had a process of maturity. They all had a process of growth. They all had a process. So when you're talking to the top producer or you're talking to the top business builder, or you're talking to the top recruiter, tell them where you are and tell them where you would like to go. And ask that question about, hey, what did you do to get there? And then, so you're asking the how-to question. That's number one, okay? How do I get from where I currently am to where I'm trying to go? But then the second question, which probably should be the first question, is what you're really listening for is you're listening for how the top producers think. Listen to what they're saying, but you're going to catch what they think by what they say, right? So catch what Abian is saying when you hear how he's thinking. Does that make sense? Listen to how he was thinking when he had five agents or when he had 10 agents or when he had 20 agents. Listen to what Riddle's thinking, how he was thinking when he had an agency of 10 people. Listen to what Megan was doing when she was just getting started doing part-time and how she was thinking. So one of the good conversations that I've had with Megan is she has switched her brain from I get to do this to I have to do this. But you don't know that until you sit with Megan and have those kind of conversations. But most people miss it because they're trying to figure out what she does. It's not necessarily what Megan does. It's how Megan thinks that separates her from everybody else. It's not necessarily what Abian does, but it's how he thinks. And then they put it together. It's not necessarily what Riddle does, but it's how Riddle thinks. And then they put it together. Or same thing when you're sitting down with Albright. If you have a lunch and you're at lunch with Albright and you're invited to him to his table and he's he's watch how he's talking to people, watch how he's interacting with people, watch how he thinks and, and watch what he's saying so you can catch the spirit of the leader. So you don't get to catch the spirit of the leader if you don't stop and listen to the leader. Now, let me just say this too. This is another side note. It's not in my notes, but I got, I got to say this. You do not learn by doing all the talking. When you're talking, you are not learning. So if I'm sitting down with Fitz, I'm not trying to do a lot of talking. If I'm sitting down with Riddle or Abian or I'm sitting down with Rojas or I'm, I'm sitting down with Nina or I'm sitting down with Marcus or I'm sitting down with Megan, I'm not going to be doing a lot of talking. You know why? Because when I'm talking, I'm not learning, right? My book says, 
be quick to hear and slow to speak, right? You have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's better to listen than it is to do all the talking. So when you're in the presence of someone who's having success, someone who's having results, now they're human just like you are, but if they're getting their results, you don't come to them and do all the talking. When you're there talking to them, you should be listening and you're listening for how they think and you're listening for what they do. Why? Because once you know how they think and you know what they do, you can then take that back to your city, take that back to your neighborhood, take that back to your business, and you can apply that information. And that's how you maximize your time at the events when it comes to getting individual one-on-one time with the person. Okay. All right. Next thing I think is very important, um, and this is um, when you have a person, and if they, let me just say this, if they're willing to sit down with you and they have time, now they might not have time if they have team stuff going on, but if you can get a breakfast with someone or a coffee, or if you can get um, lunch with someone, let me say this, don't be a taker. What does that mean, Marcus? Give, give. Give to them. If they're sitting down and breaking bread with you, you know what? Can I get that check for you, bro? Marcus, it was tight for me to even get here to the meeting. If you don't have it, I get it. I understand that. But if you do have money, like, so into their lives and give. I'm just a big believer in giving. Um, I believe that God rewards those who give. And so if I am sitting down with a person and I have a chance to um, glean from them and they're going to take a breakfast or they're going to take a lunch or they're going to, you know, take a dinner with me, I'm not saying pick up everybody's check. But there are times where I'll say, you know what, Riddle, let me, let me grab that for you. You know what, Fitz, I, I got breakfast, bro, so it's on me. I got that. And, and I'm not doing it because um, I want them to like me. I'm doing it because there's a principle. And then here, here's the principle. So I'm going Bible on you. Ready? It says that if you give to a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive a, you'll receive a prophet's reward. So what that really means is that if I'm in the presence of greatness and I give to that person, by me giving to them, I'm exchanging something with them. And because I'm exchanging something with them, the, I mean, how do I make it simple? The acumen or the anointing that's on their life is transferable because I'm giving into it and sowing into it. It's a principle. I'm trying not to do too much preaching today. Um, that's going to be Sunday, by the way, at the view. So make sure you come to our Sunday service, but I'm trying to really help you. Because if, if I'm willing to give when we have breakfast or I'm willing to give when we have lunch, guess what? Next time I ask that person a question, they're more inclined to answer me. Or when I get their number, right, they're, they're more inclined to respond to my text message. You know why? Because they like me. Because I gave to them. I didn't just come and I didn't just take, 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 take. Because when you come and you're a taker, people get exhausted by that. You know, they hit the red button on you. They don't respond to your text messages. They don't want to be around you. They they don't want to help you because there's like, okay, every time Marcus calls me, he's just taking. He's just asking me for stuff. He's not giving. So that just another, that was a sidebar, just something that just dropped in my spirit that I wanted to share with you. If you do have time to hang out with the top producer or to hang out with the top business builder, make sure if you're, if it's a breakfast or if it's a lunch or it's a dinner, go ahead and pick up theirs, go ahead and pick up their tab. Right. And then the other thing I would tell you is if you can get your team around, that's even better. So your team is getting the information or hearing what you're hearing. And then that way you don't have to duplicate or restate what they said. They heard it straight from the horse's mouth for lack of better words. I just didn't have one at the time. So those are some things that I've learned over the past 12 years that have really helped me maximize when I come to the events. Okay. So I wanted to make sure I started early with that because I think you can use that in every area. Now, next thing I want to talk about is remember, this is a networking event, okay? Um, and Andy has always told me, he says, your network will determine your net worth. Say that one more time. Your network will determine your net worth. So who are you networking with? So when you get there, right, I'm trying to network with the people who are making more money than me. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I will help anybody. Y'all, those who know me and been around me for a while, you, you know this about me. I'm not going to treat anybody different. I'm not going to treat you like you're less than because you're not. You, you're created in God's image, just like I'm created in God's image. God loves you just like he loves me. And so I, you know, this is just me talking to us and talking to leaders. Treat people how you want to be treated. Um, at my first event, I, I remember how welcome and warming and inviting Andy was for me and how he treated me just like a real person. And he was the owner of the company. And because he modeled that for me, whenever I'm at an event, I try to do the same thing for other people. Uh, I look people in the eye, I shake their hand, I smile, you know, I'm, I'm cordial to everybody. I don't try to put off on people. Now there are, let me just say this. Sometimes when I'm speaking and people catch me in between, I have been short with people and I apologize for that, but it's because my mind is, is, is locked in on other things and it's not intentional. So you also want to be aware of that. If you catch a speaker in the bathroom and they got to get up and talk and they're not real cordial, it's not because they don't want to talk to you. It's because they got a lot on their plate that they're preparing for. They may not have the bandwidth to be able to communicate the way they want to communicate with you. But for the most part, there's no excuses. We're nice to people. We're polite. We want to make sure we treat people how we want to be treated. That's the golden rule. And so when a person comes to the event, just think you got brand new people here. They've never been before. They, they don't know what to expect. They don't know what to experience, what they're going to experience. So let's, as leaders, make the experience cordial. Let's make it open and inviting to everybody so that people want to come back. And I, I say this all the time, and I'm going to say it again. People might not remember what you say, but they'll remember how you make them feel. So let's make sure we create a feeling of you're welcomed. You can belong here, right? We're going to let you belong before we try to teach you how to behave. You are welcome to hang out with us. There's nothing different from Marcus. There's nothing different from Riddle. There's nothing different from Avian than there is from you guys, right? We're, we're all the same. We're all people. We're all humans. And so we're going to treat you like humans and we're going to treat you with love and respect. So be mindful of that when, you, when you're coming to an event and when people are at the event, we're going to make sure we treat them with love and respect. All right. So... Let's get into so so I started with some of the do's, okay? Because I wanted the call to be encouraging, but we have to deal with some of the don'ts. You ready? So when you come to the event, oh, my bad, my bad. Let me do the networking real quick because I was on that and I kind of got off on a tangent. So when you're networking, remember your network determines your net worth. Get the people's phone numbers. So when you finish up that five minute conversation, hey Riddle Bros, is it okay if I shoot you a text real quick and just lock your number in? Because Riddle runs a bunch of hotspots, right? He's traveling. Steven, they, they run a bunch of hotspots. Amen. And you want to be able to, so like, if I have a person in Ohio and they're coming to the meeting or the hotspot, or I have a person in Louisville, I'm going to text Mike and Noel and say, hey, keep an eye out for my boy Chester, man. He'll be in that meeting with you guys. And then what? Because I was nice and cordial to Mike and Noel and they like Marcus, right? They're going to say, oh. This is that guy I like that bought me breakfast, or this is that person I like that took care of me or asked really good questions. And they're really trying to grow their business. And I see them making an effort. So you shoot them a text. Hey, I got my buddy Chester coming to y'all's meeting on Tuesday. Can you look out for Chester? And then they'll text you back. Perfect, Marcus. And then what I like to do is I say, hey, man, will you take a picture with Chester so I know what he looks like and send that back to me? And then what they'll do is, and uh, they'll take, and Riddle and I do this all the time. I mess with Riddle. I, whenever someone goes to Riddle's meetings, I say, hey, he's the guy with the sweet shoes on. He'll have the best shoes in the whole meeting. So when you get there, take a picture of Riddle and you'll know who I'm talking about. So they take a picture. Riddle sends it to me. Hey, Marcus, here's your boy Chester or whatever, right? And those are just some inside jokes that Riddle and, I have, Riddle and I have, but those are things that I do to connect with Riddle, but also to connect my person to a person. And so then when they go to the Tampa meeting or they, they see Riddle, they see Rojas, right? They're going to send that back to me because we've developed a relationship because I'm networking. Does this make sense? And then I'm networking with people who are having better success with me because as I network with them, my net worth begins to increase. So make sure you're getting numbers get text messages. And then if you start building your agency across the country, you can start leveraging those relationships that you build at these events. That's why you come to the event. So you can build the relationship and then you can leverage the relationship as you're building all across the country. Okay. I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. Now, some of our don'ts, you ready? Okay. So first thing is please, please, please. When you come to the event, I said this earlier, but come be in the event, be present. What I'm really saying is don't have the hallway seminars. Like it's terrible when we have a person who spent hours preparing their talk, preparing their speech, and you don't even give them the common courtesy to be in there and listen to them. They're pouring out their heart to your team, to the, to the big Alliance team. And you're in the hallway, having a hallway seminar, trying to coach someone else on how to, what leads you by, or, 
how to get a person started or I've seen all of it. Right. Or, you know, you're, you're, you're in the hallway talking about what you don't like and, and what you don't care for. Let's not be that this year, guys. Let's, let's not be that this weekend. Let's be in the meeting and be present and not have the hallway seminars or the bathroom seminars where, you know, the, the, we get a break and they, thank God we get breaks now. <laughs> we get, we get lunches, right? The lunches are a little bit longer, but when, excuse me, when the break is over or the lunch is over, go into the meeting. And be present, right? So make sure you're in the meeting and make sure you're present and not having the hallway seminars. And please, the person who's not on stage and they're trying to teach you and coach you on how to sell, don't listen to that person. Don't listen to that person because they're just telling you what they think, right? And we got everybody wants to teach somebody. But the person that's on stage that prepared their talk, those are the ones that we want to listen to, okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to say is why a person, while a person is up on stage talking and they have their seminar going, please, please, please do not be a distraction. Don't be a distraction to other people around you. <clears throat> so some ways that people are distractions is this. If, if um, let's say Riddle's talking, right, from stage and he's kind of giving his talk, but a person has their phone out and they're scrolling social media, that's a distraction. To you, one, first off, and to other people, okay? Or they're having the side conversation. So Riddle's talking, and or the speaker's talking, and when they're talking, you're talking, right? Or you're trying to talk to someone else, or you, you got people that come in and they're talking behind you. That is disrespectful, you guys. Because remember, when you're talking, you're not learning. But now you're distracting or taking away from other people who are trying to learn or trying to get the information. That's not fair to them for you to be talking when they're trying to learn or they're trying to get as much information so they can take that back and explode their business. So be mindful of that when you're in the room and you're at an event that you're not doing the talking over someone else when someone else is there talking. Um, Try not to send the text messages. Now I know some people take notes on their phone and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not talking about that, but like, when you're there, you don't want to be sending a bunch of text messages to people and things of that nature. You want to kind of already have all that stuff taken care of, or better yet, just put your phone on do not disturb. So while you're in there, put your phone on do not disturb. You won't have any distractions. The phone won't be a distraction. And then don't talk while the speaker's talking, right? Be intentional about listening and getting the information. And that is one of the things I think will really help you move forward in your business, because those are things that you know, you can take because you've learned it and now you can apply it to your business. Now I'm going to say this, but us as leaders, okay, you got to see yourself as a leader. Even if you don't have a huge team, you're still a leader of one, right? You're leading yourself. Or if you do have a huge team, keep in mind, your team is going to do what you do. So if I'm in the back talking and being a distraction, it's not a surprise to me that my team is in the back doing the same thing. If I'm in the front and I'm not paying attention, it's not a surprise to me that my team is not paying attention. If I am talking while another person is talking, it doesn't surprise me that my team is doing the same thing because it's kind of like your kids, right? It's like when you tell your kids, hey, son, don't smoke, but yet you're smoking. It's your son is going to smoke. Your daughter's going to smoke. Why? Because they're going to do what they see, not what you say. Your team will do what they see and not what you say, right? We like to think they do what we say. Mm -mm. but they're going to do what we do. So make sure you're intentional about how you behave because they are always watching you and they will catch it and they will do what you do. Okay. So those are some of my don'ts. Now, a couple of more nuggets and we probably won't go the whole hour, but I I just want to say this real quick. When you come, come with an expectation, Mm -hmm. come with an expectation Because you get what you expect. Come with an expectation of I'm going to receive. I'm going to be filled up. I'm going to be informed. I'm going to learn. I'm going to be invigorated. I'm going to be re-energized. Because if you come with that expectation, guess what? That's what you're going to get. But if you come with the expectation like, oh, I don't want to be here. Uh, This is not beneficial. I could have saved that money. I can be in the field writing business. I can be recruiting. Then you're going to not really get the full impact or the full info or the full gusto of what the event can really do for you. So when it comes to um, level of expectation, 
I, always, I, I love to share this story because it's so um, applicable. But there's two, two stories I think of. But there was a lady who had heard about Jesus. And she heard that there was a man who was going around healing people. Okay, And when she heard that, she had an expectation. And her expectation was that if I can just touch this man, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I'll get what I need. Right. So she had an expectation. Do you have an expectation that, you know what, if I can just come to the event, if I can just get in the room and I can just hear the information of what the top leaders are doing, what the top sales producers are doing, what the people who are having success are doing, then I can produce what they produce. If you don't have that expectation, guess what? You don't perform. Let me share this with you. Because in that same story, Jesus is in a crowd of people. And as he's in the crowd of people, everybody was touching him. Everybody was pressing up against him. You know, it was getting the height of his ministry. So people were coming up against him, rubbing up against him and touching him. And this woman specifically, though, she had an expectation. And she said, if I can but touch him. So she comes with an expectation. Now, there's going to be people who are in the meeting that are not going to get anything or receive anything from it. You know why? Because they're not coming with an expectation. I feel, well, I feel like I'm trying not to get too preachy, but just follow me. Okay. So they're, they're going to come, but they don't have an expectation like you do. There were people who were around Jesus, but they didn't have an expectation that they were going to get healed, that they were going to get their blessing. So when you come to the event next weekend, are you going to be like the woman with the issue of blood where you come with an expectation and say, hey, I don't know what I'm going to get, but I know that I'm going to get the information that I need. I, I know that someone throughout this weekend, Mark Asetta, the, t- the people that are going to be teaching, someone, Andy, someone is going to say something that I need to hear that's going to take me for the the next 90 days that's going to take me for the next five years that's going to take me to where i need to be in my business because i have an expectation that i'm going to receive and i promise you this whenever you come with a level of expectation god never lets you down never lets you down he responds to your expectation or another way of saying it is he responds to your faith the woman had faith. She had an expectation that she was going to receive. Marcus, how does a business meeting have to do anything with faith? Because you're coming in faith that you're going to learn and receive the information you need to receive to grow your business. So you come with that expectation. And then when you come with that expectation, guess what? God shows up and says, hey, uh, Marcus, or hey, Alex, this is the information you needed to explode your business. This is the information you needed to keep from quitting. Because I know sometimes when people come to these meetings, like it was it was a meeting that kept me from quitting. It was a meeting that I heard something that even though I wanted to throw in the towel, even though I said this isn't working and I want to quit and I want to give up, there was something that they said that was like, you know what? If Marcus can make it from a guy who was on food stamps and state assistance and was having literally to get three toys for kids per Christmas. Now look at what he's doing. That person can get inspired and they can say, you know what, because I came and I expected, I received. So she expected to receive. Now, who are you going to be? Are you going to be like the crowd where you're in the meeting and you're touching the person, but you didn't get anything from the meeting? Or are you going to be like the woman with the issue of blood? Good news is you get to choose. You get to choose what person you want to be in this meeting. You can be like the crowd just there, just hearing information and it doesn't benefit you. Or you can be like the woman with the issue of blood and you can say, you know what? I come to receive my breakthrough. I have come to receive my miracle. I have come to receive the financial literacy. I have come to receive the information to really be able to help and serve more families. And then what happens is now that your heart is open, right? She touched him and it says that he stopped and he said, who touched me? And Peter looked at him and this is just me imagining it, okay, in the story. And he's like, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. You're Jesus. What do you mean, Marcus? Everybody's coming to the meeting, but not everybody who comes to the meeting is going to receive equally because they don't have a level of expectation. Listen to me. Not everybody who comes to the meeting will receive equally because they don't have the same level of expectation. So they come to the meeting. You have a level of expectation. And then what happens? It says Jesus stopped. He said, who touched me? Peter said, everybody's touching you. What do you mean? Jesus said, nah. Someone touched me because I felt power or I felt virtue go out of me. Yep. Marcus, are you really relating the Bible story to the meeting? Yes, I am, because it's applicable. Follow me, okay? So 
when Jesus stopped, he said, I felt power of virtue go out of me. So there were other people who were touching him, but they didn't have an expectation. So they didn't receive the power that they needed to get their breakthrough. So when you come to the meeting, are you coming with a level of expectation so you can receive your power, so you can receive your information, so you can receive your breakthrough? So when you come, what are you coming for? Do you have a level of expectation that says, you know what? I expect to receive. And then Jesus turned around and here's what he told her. So immediately, so this woman, the, the story goes, she had been bleeding for 12 years. Yep. Some of you have been in business and you're bleeding. You're suffering in your business. You want to quit and throw in the towel. You can even be a top producer and a top leader. And ooh, I feel you, Lord. And some of y'all are looking at this call like, Marcus, if something don't give, bro, I'm going to have to go back and get a job, man. I'm going to have to go do something different. I am speaking to you right now. I don't know who you are or where you are, but I am talking to you. You, you know that if something doesn't change, you're going to have to go do something different. Listen to me. Come this weekend or next weekend with this level of expectation that says, you know what, Marcus, I'm coming to hear what I need to hear. You don't know when it's going to be. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know what it's going to do, but you're going to come with the heart that's open that says, except something happens, I'm not going to get the change that I need. So you get the change that you need. She comes and she touches him. And then Jesus stops and says, no, I felt power go out of me. And he turns around and he looks at the woman and here's what he says. And here's what I'm saying to you to close this call. He looked at her and he said, woman, your faith has made you whole. Yep. When I went to that first meeting, I had to put it on a credit card. I had no money, but my faith, <laughs> but faith, faith has kept me for the last 12 years. It's kept me for the last 40 plus years of my life, right? My faith in God, that God is going to show up and show out in every instance of my life. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know that if I get to this meeting, someone is going to say something that I'll be able to use to take my business to the next level because God didn't create you to fail. He didn't create you to not be successful. He created you to be fruitful. He created you to multiply. He's put you in this garden of the Alliance, in this vineyard, so that you can maximize the opportunity you have here while you're on the earth, okay? So you come to the meeting with that expectation, just like the woman with the issue of blood did. She got what she expected because she pressed through. Her pressing was this. When you have an issue of blood in the Old Testament, you couldn't even be in public. She wasn't even supposed to be around people. She wasn't even supposed to be touching people. But she said, you know what? I don't care who knows how bad it is. Some of us have to get to that point. When I went to my first meeting, I said, I don't care. I'm literally paying my mortgage with a credit card. So what else do I have to lose? I come to the event. And when I got to the event, the Lord spoke to me. He said, this is that. This is what you have been looking for. There are some of you who are listening to my voice and you know that if something doesn't happen, if something doesn't change, you're going to be out of business in the next 90 days. Come to the event, but come with a level of expectation and with a level of anticipation that says, you know what? I'm anticipating that I'm going to get something great. And then guess what? God shows up and he said, according to your faith, daughter, be healed. There are some of you who need to be healed in your mind of broke thinking, poverty thinking, struggling, not wanting to help people. And those shackles are going to fall off next weekend. There are some of you who need to be healed in your heart. There's going to be healing that happens at this event so you can grow. Because when dysfunction is removed, growth is automatic. There's going to be a lot of dysfunction that's going to be removed when you come to these events. So your growth is going to be automatic. So what am I sharing with you? I want you, when you come next weekend to Raleigh, North Carolina, I want you to come and be present. But I want you to come in faith. I don't know how bad it is for you to get here. I don't know if you're paying it on credit cards. I don't know if you have to borrow money from other people. I, I don't know what you're going to have to go through. But just like I don't know what that woman with the issue of blood had to go through, she said, I don't care what I have to go through. All I got to do is just get there. All I got to do is get to Jesus. And that's what I'm telling you is all you got to do is get to the event. And when you get to the event, be present at the event with a level of expectation, a level of anticipation, and watch. God is going to show up, and God is going to impart his wisdom to you. He's going to impart his knowledge to you. He's going to give you the ability to take the information and then apply it so you can grow and you can help others grow so you can become the best version of yourself. So this was what was on my heart today about how to maximize the events. Um, sorry at the end I got a little preachy, but those who know me, this is just how I roll. So I'm not, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry if that makes sense.
I know that most people need to hear this. When you come to the event, remember you're going to be present. Come with open heart, open mind, ready to receive. And then your breakthrough is coming. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel because the best is yet to come. This is Marcus Richardson out of Aurora, Colorado. I love y'all. Appreciate you. And thank you for this opportunity to serve the team.